Hi, welcome to another edition of the Daily Record, High School Football Insider. I'm sports editor Aaron Dorkson, along with Andrew Vogel. He's filling in for Mike Plant, our normal high school football writer, along with myself. Apparently, since Mike's son Jay works in the Washington, D.C. area, Mike thought that the government shutdown affected Mike as well. So we hope to get that worked out and get Mike back next week. But thanks for joining me, Andrew. Yeah, uh, we think that Mike is actually uh, wandering around the museum looking for how many copies of the Daily Record are, are there. So, Well, this is an exciting time of the year, and it's really a time when we can start looking at the playoff numbers, and they really mean something, Andrew. Uh, we're hitting week eight, and there's a lot of teams. If you're not on the playoff radar right now, you probably don't have a chance the rest of the year, but there are a number of teams that either pretty much have a spot locked up or if they win out, control their own destiny. Right. Um, the biggest region you could start with would be uh, Division Five, Region 16, where there's about six teams that all have a, a decent shot still. Uh, Northwestern's ranked second in that division at 6-1, and one, Loudonville 7-0. and oh. If they win out, they're pretty much in. Um, Chippewa last week won what we were dubbing the most improved bowl when they edged out Waynedale 28-24. Who knows, it may even be our Coach of the Year bowl because, you know, how do you separate the job Mike Boley and Matt Zerker have done, but the Chips did win that game after going just 1-29 the last three years. They're eighth in this region now. If they win out, they have a little better than a 50-50 shot of making the playoffs. Norway is ninth. They have that huge Week 10 game uh, looming with Northwestern. Orville 11th, if they win out, pretty decent shot of making it. And Wayne Dale at uh, 14th, they would need a lot of help and also have to win out. Yeah, obviously a lot of our area teams are in that uh, Region 16, but there are a couple of other area teams that are kind of, kind of also looking at the playoff picture. Um, West Holmes last week had a tough game against Mansfield Senior, 28-23. Right now, they are ranked. They would. They're ranked ninth in the um, Division Three Region Nine um, playoff picture in the computer rankings. Uh, the bad news for West Holmes is that even if they went out and go eight and two, they're still only their playoff chances are only forty percent. Um, part of that might be attributed to the fact that kind of their conference, their non-conference schedule wasn't that great. However, the one to their opener, Triway, however, is humming along here. So probably. West Holmes is probably rooting for Triway to win out and get the most playoff points that they can. And speaking of the Titans, um, Triway um, has righted the ship to go. They're five and two now. Um, right now they've got, I think, let's see here, they've got a, probably a 78% chance, which is pretty good, um, given that when they started 0 and two. And the good news for Triway also is that they have two tough games against Indian Valley which we'll talk about in, here in a little bit, as well as Manchester. But the good news for Triway is that even if they split those two games and then as long as they win their finale against Timken, they've got a 99% chance as long as they finish with seven wins. So that's got to be kind of good news for them, that they don't kind of, it's, it's not a kind of single elimination here these, these next couple weeks. Well, Triway last week went to CVCA and won 43-21, to just a really impressive win for them. Um, and they've set up maybe their most exciting two-week span since they've been in the pack. They're going to play Indian Valley and Manchester back-to-back -back at home starting this Friday with Indian Valley coming to town. And, you know, if they can win those two games, that would probably give them the pack title and the playoff spot. So that's the game of the week that a lot of people are looking at. There are a number of other really exciting games in the area this week. So we're going to take a break. We'll come back and we'll break down the Week 8 matchups in Welcome back to the Daily Record High School Football Insider, and we've got a lot of good games. Kind of the three that stick out um, are six and one Indian Valley travels to five and two Triway at Jack Miller Field, and then seven and zero oh Loudonville um, receives a visit from six and one Danville, and probably the big game in the Wayne County League this week is the improved Wayne Dale at four and three against the league leading uh, Northwestern Huskies at six and one. Yeah, I would agree with you, Andrew, that those are probably the three headliners. Um, I'm really looking forward to watching Triway play. I know you went over to CVCA, covered it from talking to people at the game, reading your story. It sounds like uh, Tony Lee's shotgun spread attack was about as efficient and well-tuned 
as it, as it could possibly be. All Parker Carmichael did was go 29 for 34, throw for 391 That's yards. Not, not bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> when, a day's work. <laughs> yeah, when you read those numbers though on the paper, he's not airing it out like throwing home run passes down the sidelines or over the middle. From what you were telling me about the game and some other people there, it's quick, efficient passes, hitting the receivers in stride. A lot of times they throw the ball so quick you can't get a pass rush. And it's, it relies on timing, like you said, and probably that's part of the reason why, and, I, and Parker talked about this after the game, that when you've got a lot of new receivers, Jordan Miller's really the, the one holdover from last year, that takes time, and game time is different than practice, and so it's probably yeah. good that they're hitting their stride now. And one receiver that really made a big mark last week was Dylan Kopp. He led the way with five catches for 116 yards. Jordan Miller was close behind Troy Haven, and that triway defense was really impressive, uh, holding a good running CVCA team that had defeated Norway earlier this year to 65 rushing yards in the first half to – let them get going. Uh, Andrew, what are you looking at in the WCAL with their matchups this week? Um, well, Wayne Dill and Northwestern should be a good – Northwestern probably where we thought they'd be. Um, Wayne Dill, obviously, an improved team. Um, I talked to Mike Toot last night, and really nobody's been able um, to slow down their kind of two-headed monster of Tyler Smith running the ball and Malachi Naledi. Who touchdown can also, Tyler. Yeah, he touchdown, has just been running wild. He has been. And there have been a couple of teams that have maybe slowed him a little bit, but nobody's really stopped him. And um, Tude also mentioned that his defense has been playing good, not great. Um, and But they're going to probably need to be up to form against Ren Weaver, who has over 1,000 rushing yards as well as 800 yards passing. And um, he's a handful, simply put. Um, Matt Zerker, meanwhile, knows that you've got to be able – you probably aren't going to be able to stop Tyler and Malachi – um, but you got to at least kind of contain them a little bit. So um, that would be a big, big win for Wayndale if, if they can spring that upset, and it would really throw the league into a flux. Well, looking at the rest of the league, it's going to be Chippewa at Dalton, Rittman at Hillsdale, and Norway going to Smithville. The Smithies got their first win last week. They're now 1-6 and six when they defeated Rittman. Norway's 5-2, and two, probably has to win out to make the playoffs. Um, interestingly, as good as Norway's been, they have only won on Smithville's field in the last 40 years. I need to double check this, but I've been hearing one time in the last 40 years over at Smithville. That's stunning. Yeah, even their That's state stunning. title year, they, it was their only game yeah. they lost at Smithville. So it's kind of been a house of horrors. But uh, the Bobcats will be favored in this one. They have two Rittman transfers that are now starting for them. And Caleb Harris and Brock Maxwell were on the street. I actually saw them, so it's firsthand as they're hoping to be back next week. So that would be big. Let's run down the OCC real quick. Orville's going to Madison. Uh, Lexington's going to visit West Holmes. Mansfield Senior 7-0 coming to Worcester 2-5. Um, like you said, West Holmes is going to have to win out, maybe get some help. Orville, if it wins out, has about a 50-50 chance of making the playoffs. And they, looking at their schedule, that's, it would be doable for them to win out probably. They've, they've had their toughest OCC slate kind of in the middle, and now they kind of it eases up a little bit. Well, to complete the rest of the area games, uh, Cloverleaf's going to visit Talmadge. What a matchup this is. We're going to have Mike Plant when he comes back cover this. Danville 6-1 and one, going to Loudonville 7-0. and oh, And Tuslaw 1-6 and six is going to visit Manchester 6-1. and one. Mike, I, Mike made sure when he made his travel plans in D.C. that he'd be back so he could go to Loudonville on Friday. So Yeah, we've been wanting to get one of our staff writers down there. We have a feeling we're going to be covering the Redbirds in the playoffs as well. Well, on behalf of... Andrew Vogel and our partner down in the Washington, D.C. area, Michael Plant. This is Aaron Dorkson. Thanks for watching the Daily Record High School Football Insider. Enjoy the games.